Welcome to Frame.io Webinars. This is your place to connect with our team and learn firsthand from our experts. Ask questions live to take your Frame.io account to the next level. Frame.io is a secure cloud-based app that brings it all together with real-time review and approval tools, accelerated file sharing, and instant dailies. It can be tough to know where to start, and we want to help you along the way. Whether you have a small or large team, sign up for a session today for yourself or even your entire staff, and take advantage of real-life support from Frame.io employees who are also industry professionals. We have sessions that cover Camera to Cloud, our integrations with various NLEs, our powerful web application, and workflow tips to make your production faster and more efficient. Get ready to be inspired, challenged, and amazed. Welcome to Frame.io Webinars. That's right. Welcome to Frame.io Webinars. Hello, everyone. My name is Sean, and I am a content producer focused on instructional media, and we're here to talk about uh, uh, enterprise plans. We're here to talk with Stamp Productions. Uh, we're talking all things Frame.io today, and we're really excited to uh, talk to you today and get you a little bit of knowledge of uh, our enterprise plans, what can it offer for you, and what it has done positively for Stamp Productions. Uh, before I get started with any webinar, I always love to see where everyone's chiming in from, so please throw it in the chat. Uh, it's a great place to locate uh, the chat option. Uh, because we like to answer questions at the end, and we want to give you the opportunity uh, to actually start uh, uh, getting those questions in. We've got a team on the sidelines that can answer those questions for you, but we got a little slot at the end of the webinar uh, so that we can leave you a little time if you want to ask questions uh, to Stamp Productions or Jason, our moderator today, uh, and go over a few things uh, on this webinar. Uh, but I'm chiming from uh, sunny Hollywood, California, although... It's not been very sunny lately. It's been a little cloudy, cloudy out there a bit, and it's still kind of cold. I feel like it should be summer by now. So if anyone else is in the California area, let me know uh, your pain points. Uh, but here we go. We got a few popping in. We got London coming in. We got San Francisco. We got St. Louis. I love St. Louis. Uh, Berlin, Malaysia. Uh, we've got Washington. We got another St. Louis. Hello again. Uh, Washington, D.C., NYC. We got North Carolina. Uh, we got St. Paul and I think New Madrid. Is that Minnesota? Mo? Why am I why am I drawing a blank here? I think that's I think that's correct. Uh, keep them coming in. Cleveland, Ohio, Tampa, Texas, Atlanta. Holy cow! This is a great round trip trip. I love seeing folks overseas because sometimes I wonder how late is it out there. I mean, I, I first of all I appreciate you all jumping on uh, when it's late at night. So I appreciate you all doing that. Uh, we got Alabama, Missouri, Miami. This is amazing. Thank you all so much for joining. And we really hope you get a lot of value out of our session today. And that leads me actually to go into what we're going to talk about. And of course, yes, we're going to talk about Frame.io. Uh, that's, of course, the thing. But we're going to talk about how Stamp Productions was able to grow their company using Frame.io. Uh, and a lot of you are probably already Frame.io users. So you already kind of know that Frame.io is kind of your central hub, it's a place where you can put all of your creative assets in. Uh, and your collaborative team, your creative collaborative team, can go in, leave comments, access media that they need to get access to. If you're using camera to cloud, you're able to get your, your dailies from set directly to post. Your editorial team can start working uh, and also manage all of your creative assets, not just video and photos, but also your PDFs, your documents, everything you need inside of the cloud. But on the plans that you may be on, if you're on our regular retail plans, um, you may you know, want to expand a little bit. And we want to talk to you about those key features that will enable you uh, to grow your business because it's not about just getting a bigger or larger plan. It's about really implementing these tools and making them serve the right purpose that you need to drive your business forward. Uh, and that's what we're really excited to talk about today. Uh, but of course, Frame.io works on a variety of different applications from our iOS app that works on both the iPhone and iPad. Uh, but we have an incredibly robust web app and of course, if you have an enterprise plan, you could take advantage of our Apple TV app where you can actually review your dailies inside of a meeting room or in the comfort of your own home. So um, we want to talk to you about all of this stuff today. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm going to be kind of hosting this session uh, and, you know, kind of keeping time and everything. But we're actually going to be talking to both Jason Druss, who is our product marketing manager here at Frame.io, and also Ben Utley, who is the founder and CEO of Stamp Productions. Now, Stamp Productions has done a wealth of 
uh, 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 productions out there. We're going to talk a little bit more specifically about what those are. But just to give you a little taste of what Stamp Productions does, I'm going to go ahead and show you what they are all about. So I'm going to go ahead and play a quick video for you all and uh, go ahead and enjoy. Ten years is a long time in this industry. We've told many stories in this decade and reached hundreds of millions of people for our clients. But what is our story? In one word, love. Love of story. Love of films. Love of my family, who continue to inspire and drive me. Taking lessons I'd learned from some of the world's greatest storytellers, I imagine crafting powerful content with emotion in every frame. Imagination, inspiration. A friend gave me my first job for 300 pounds. Trust like that can never be underestimated. You have to deliver. Because as a great man once said, today, today will determine, determine what we are. are. Respect and, and reputation. reputation. And, and to, to any person, person that's the, the biggest, biggest thing, thing you can, can ever have. have. We have earned our reputation and grown to become a team of experts. We've learned from some of the most competitive people on the planet, traveling the world, collaborating with many of you. We've produced music, animation, graphics, films. The technology may have changed, but human connection to story remains. And that's the craft. That's what we do. And all the while I'm reminded of why we started. Love. Love who you work with. And what you do. And don't work a day in your life. That video always gives me uh, goosebumps, uh, but let's let's actually dig in and talk with Stamp. I'm going to bring Jason in here. Jason, how are you, sir? Good to see you this morning. Thank you very much, Sean. I'm doing well. How are you? Fantastic. I'm so glad you're able to be here, and uh, we're going to be Ben on here in just a moment, so you guys can actually start your discussion. Uh, but man, what uh, what goosebumps that video gives me! So thank you again so much for jumping on. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and let you take the floor, uh, everyone. Jason Dress. Thanks, Sean. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Jason. I'm a product marketing manager here at Frame.io and a Frame.io user myself going all the way back to 2016. Um, and without further ado, we're going to bring in um, Ben Utley, uh, founder and, and CEO of Stamp Productions. How are you, Ben? I'm good. Thank you, Jason. Lovely to see you. Thank you. It's great to see you too. Thank you for taking the time uh, to hang out with us. And I have to reiterate what Sean just said. That reel gives me gives me the feels every time I watch it. It's a it's a very unique reel. I love that you're not just showing the work that your company does. You're telling a narrative story about about who you are, um, and and what you do for your clients. It's a very very excellent piece of content. Oh, thank you very much. I mean. <clears throat> Oh, it's what we all us users of frame IO and filmmakers is what we're trying to do is tell stories and I think when we did that it's actually a bit old um now we need to update it but um th that's the whole thing isn't it it's trying to with like how can we tell our own story rather than you know just do the latest montage of, of work so yeah thank you very much I'm glad it's sort of uh hitting a few notes there um for you so yeah good of course, yeah. And and speaking of, of telling your own story, um, I would love for you to tell us about your company. You know, how did you folks get started? What's your origin story? How were you able to turn Stamp Productions um, from its genesis into the, the incredibly successful production company that, that you find yourself managing today? 
Uh, well, yeah, it's, it's a good question. I, I think I touched on it in the film a couple of times. Um, we've actually been going nearly nearly fifteen years now, so that the VO shows you how old the VO is. But the um, but the essence has stayed the same. So my first job, I'd been working in front of camera doing TV and films, and you know, got married, needed to pay the mortgage a bit more regularly, and acting is the kind of thing where you know I still do bits of it and bits bits of voiceover, but actually, you need to be able to you know develop a, a craft that you that to some degree you can work harder at and and grow so when i first started i think um as i said in the video my first jo job came from a friend it was 300 pounds uh, i had no idea what i was doing just uh, a high degree of wanting to not let somebody down who'd given me that trust and i think that stayed with us and it's sort of that's been one of the secret ingredients i guess or i guess is that trust so whenever we take on a job big or small, um, we deliver. And, and that's, you know, uh, a big factor in our, our growth story. We've sort of done some really big jobs. We, I guess the biggest single job has been around the million budget mark uh, and right down to, you know, very small uh, corporate films that might be just one or two thousand dollars or, or pounds or whatever so and, and and again it all just comes down to, to trust really and it's it, that feeds through in everything that we do so the the way we are with people but also the systems that we use and I think that's why you know we've been such a long time user of Frame.io we trust that it works it has always worked and with the enterprise uh, solutions that we use um, it brings an enormous amount of trust that we can take with our clients. Uh, yeah, so that's been a really big sort of journey. And <clears throat> I'll just talk you through some of the team here, um, most of which have been with me for uh, a very long time. <clears throat> so on the left is Fraser's our head of in-house. There's Then there's Andy standing up against the wall. He's our senior editor. He's been here 14 years. Then there's Fiona, who's a production manager and... And then there's Joe, head of production, then there's myself, and then I was a senior producer, Martin Black. So we were a pretty tight team. We work with a lot of uh, freelancers as well. So we work all over the world. We work with, um, we love collaborating. Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's a community, isn't it? The filmmaking business, uh, you know, it's just great to meet new people and work with other people, whether in front of camera or behind camera. So, yeah, I think that's sort of where we started and... <clears throat> Where we started was you know, largely in the sports realm. So we, we started making films for sports teams and then we did some feature docs that were very successful. Um, uh, the sort of that hidden camera access of doc, of doc stuff. I was massively inspired by the NFL series. Uh, there was Hard Knocks at the time. I think it later became All or Nothing. But just that access and we sort of try to emulate a bit of that in the rugby world and we try to make it all cinematic i shot a lot of the documentaries myself using cine lenses which back then on fs 700 so i don't know if any of the people online remember those cameras but you know we sort of developed from there and again it was just trying to develop the trust of the people that we were filming but also then you know develop an audience that you know the films that we were doing and and then now we We've just sort of steadily grown. I don't think we ever exploded. Um, and we've just been using the tools that we can to, to 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 sort of take one step at a time and take new projects. And now we work in aviation. We work in, um, uh, you know, corporate sports, TV commercials, cinema commercials, podcasts, you name it. We, we just love telling stories. That's incredible. And... Going back to something that you said earlier, uh, which I think defines that the ethos of you folks, you just said, you know, we deliver. I think that's such an important attitude to have, um, you know, no matter what kind of technology you're using or who you are, how big your company is, that, that ethos of we deliver is so essential to growing your company and scaling your company. And after spending some time speaking with you and learning about the way you folks work, that seems to be a um, uh, very, very true fact about how Stamp Productions operates. Um, and as you've grown from 
uh, sports, as you've said, a lot of a lot of short form content, a lot of branded content, which you're still doing in a in a in a much larger way than you were years ago. I'd love to talk about some of your feature documentary work, specifically about um, uh, Silver Spitfire. Yeah. Um, so we've done. I think I've directed and produced uh, four feature length documentaries. Uh, the first three were in sport, um, and then this one was a sort of independent film uh called silver spitfire the longest flight um we we went around the world uh circumnavigated the world in a in a single engine uh world war ii original fighter um called gertie uh as we affectionately call her and we went around the world which was incredibly dangerous and everyone told us it was impossible um and so six of us myself uh, an engineer, two, uh, well, three pilots, and a, and the project manager, sort of went around the world, and yeah, it was an amazing trip. And I did the stills and the filming on it, and with it within that, I was using frame <coughs> the whole way around, and because I was on my own, I had to do the dit myself. Anyone who's had to do filming and photography every day on their own for even a few days is quite hard work. But when you're doing it in over the ice caps. Uh, in cities or in Asia, in the deserts, um, I had to get some support. And to do that, I was using sort of frame by sending clips up and then the guys could download and then edit the social media and the photos that we could release. And we've now got a sort of book coming out and, uh, um, yeah, and, and all of that. So, yeah, very exciting uh, project to be involved with. And uh, Red Bull Studios sort of came on board as a sort of first film that they were going to do so they sort of got on board and helped us which was great um and we had yeah an amazing amazing time so yeah as you can see there i got to do some things that not everyone gets to do so fly around the world at 2000 feet and see the world from a totally different perspective um and open the door and film and uh yeah as you can see here this is above the ice cap um i want to say about 2000 feet over the ice cap which is just vast we flew for hours and saw nothing but but white polar ice and you know just opening the door is quite exhilarating um if you're up in an airplane so that's our little support plane i'm holding a stills camera and and video there with a 25 30 kilogram sort of camera unit with the with a gyro uh because this was just before the road in the dji things and the stabilizers got really good so i was sort of using a sort of gyroscope and then i could just sort of get the film camera going out the side and yeah it was all very exciting uh to do that and you know we're now pleased to sort of get back finish the edit and which we did through sort of lockdown and yeah get a, get a world record to boot so yeah very very fortunate people really um yeah just yeah quite exciting i can see it's nice to see some people on here from lots of the countries we went to uh so uh, maybe they saw us fly over the top i don't know so, and yeah so this is the music video that's playing now so we did a music video for the end of the film we we wanted to bring some scale to it so these are shots from that we took on the trip um and then we afterwards we made this song so we filmed uh lily buddy ace is an amazing singer she wrote it the lyrics and she recorded her in australia the prague phenomenal orchestra um and we made that in lockdown to go with the film towards the end. So yeah, it's really very proud of the work. And uh, but a lot of people, you know, filmmaking I always talk about is the is the ultimate team game. And we couldn't have done it without Frame. We could because I I would not have been able to d deliver the we the things we needed to for our sponsors uh, as we went round. I wouldn't have been able to do the dit every day with this amount of footage and and cameras in really remote parts of the world. So. From the very beginning, I think we've been using frame uh, to the best of its ability and trying to really develop how we operate uh, as we go around the world, really. And, and we continue to do that. And since we've gone to enterprise, um, uh, we, we're using that in, in, the, in our clients now who really appreciate it. And for many, it's a sort of it's a step above what our competitors are doing and gives them a level of insurance uh, with the water marking and the te the team's usage, which I, I guess we'll go on to in a minute. But the, um, yeah, that shot's one of my favorites. We went over the desert, that's over Jordan. <clears throat> and it was just beautiful colors. 
uh, yeah, we're very lucky uh, to do these kind of things, aren't we? So, yeah. It's incredible. It's a, it's a gorgeous documentary. It's an amazing story. And uh, following up what you just said, I th- I'm always fascinated by how very small but robust teams are able to accomplish very, very large scale projects that about, you know, a decade or so ago would have been considered absolutely impossible. And the, the decentralized infrastructure of what cloud collaboration can deliver to teams um, makes you stronger, makes you more agile and gives you that competitive advantage. Um, so I'd, I'd love to, to, to dive deeper into how your frame IO usage scaled over the years before camera to cloud, after camera to cloud, and then eventually making that leap from um, regular frame IO to, a, to an enterprise plan, being able to take advantage of, of more security features and team management, things like that. Yeah, well, I think we've sort of grown along with the features. And I, I think I've always found one of the things I loved about frame from the beginning was there were, you guys were always adding the features that we sort of needed like intuitively so and as we sort of grew so the features were sort of developing so when we 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 have a um a sort of regular client in the fintech world uh in the uk very important to us um and the the necessity then to have increased security uh more um settings if you will uh, for the team so that we can separate out uh, clients uh, and team members to make sure that only the people that are authorized to see some of the material because some of the material we're dealing with is very sensitive it's financial results for companies that are out two or three days before and it's the kind of material where you know directors of businesses including our own would go to jail if it was sort of leaked uh, or acted upon so we need to make sure that we know exactly who has 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 released that and i think without frameo's features we wouldn't as a small company uh, you know relatively small um be able to sort of attain those sorts of features uh, and i don't think we would have you know clients like that who you know for us a, a, a you know a regular client which allows us they give us the bedrock of our business really so <clears throat> you know most products and productions as you know they're sort of one-off pieces, you know. Someone wants an advert, or someone wants a corporate video for their for their thing. But when you've got a client where we make all their content all year round, um, that's like gold dust. And we, I can safely say we wouldn't have that without uh, Frameio Enterprise because the features wouldn't be there. So, that, so we wouldn't legally be able to to sort of meet that demand. But you know, it's been useful. You know, we work for Red Bull. We do a lot of stuff for Red Bull UK. Uh, and and again, they they love the features you know and these guys are you know top end media people they're used to seeing everything and they were blown away when i i think i was the first people to take frame AI to them and they were like oh my god this is amazing and that was just on the comments and the review and approve system <clears throat> and it just massively helped streamline it and it just made us look good and again so we've been working with them for years now and and again it's just uh, yeah it's just great to see how you know frame is always pushing the boundaries of what's possible and 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 using that sort of helping us help our clients because that's what we're here to do right we're here to make their lives happier and th- th- help them reach their audiences and there are lots of ways that frame does that uh, on the on the standard level you know with the review and approve but then it's the as you grow and you get bigger you need to deliver a higher level of uh, uh security and a and a, i guess a bespoke service that that meets their needs and and that's what we do and it it just opens up those sorts of contracts that just wouldn't be possible otherwise a bespoke service that really uh, speaks out to me um as well Uh, i've always thought on on my end too and complete in agreement with you that that frame io is one of those platforms that allows you to add more value to for, for your clients it's easier to send them content it's easier to make sure that the right person has the right access to the right asset um, and being that indispensable service, it makes you indispensable to your clients as you grow with them. It helps build that relationship and makes it a lot easier to, to provide those services to your clients no matter where you are. And for the folks that are uh, watching, wondering, you know, possibly what is the, what is the difference between uh, the, the standard and enterprise version of, of Frame.io, 
Um, there are a lot of differentiating features that we can talk about. First being um, asset lifecycle management, which is the ability to auto auto delete, auto erase, or auto archive um, a project um, at, at, the, at the time of your choice to make sure that you're managing your storage properly instead of having to manually go in there and remove your assets. Um, Multi-team management, which I know uh, Ben is something that you folks utilize over, over at Stamp. That's essentially the ability to make sure that you can completely separate different teams within your own organizations and within the, the, the groups of clients that you're working with to make sure your external stakeholders like freelancers um, and your clients only have access to specific projects within a specific team that you choose to put them inside of with their own custom uh, branding, seat and storage allocations. Um, you also get 10-bit video playback, which when you're working on large scale, either whether it's a feature length documentary or a uh, brand, branded content, um, the ability to have 10 bit playback is even better for, for QC, for color correction, for very, very high end review and, uh, and approval. And of course, something else that Ben was speaking to, um, next gen security um, with watermark ID, new forensic watermarking, DRM encryption, so on and so forth, um, having the, the Industry's best uh, and most uh, technologically advanced security tech stack really helps make a difference to clients and customers. Um, but also, Ben, I think you've actually uh, been kind enough to share um, share your screen with us and show us how you're utilizing Frame.io uh, Enterprise at your company. Um, Sean, I think we can pull up that screen. There it is. Yeah, Ben, I would I would love to take a tour of your folder structure here and see how the folks at Stamp actually organize their projects for remote collaboration with their clients and amongst yourselves as you're shooting different kinds of content across the globe. Yeah, so like, like you were saying, the, the asset life cycle is actually quite important, which I'll go to on the, you know, keeping our, our, our carbon footprint down so and saving space and saving money, right? So there's lots of things there, but Okay, so you can see how we have, uh, I'm the most disorganized person in the world, and this actually makes me look organized, which is amazing. So we have uh, quite a few clients and different projects that we have here, and I've pulled up a couple here. Um, we have some in here, which are with one of our fintech companies, and so that has a number of teams that can access it only. This, uh, because of, uh, for confidentiality, I can sort of share this project. I don't mean to bang about on about it, but... Um, so when we created the Silver Spitfire film, as we were going, all of my team have access to to this file. So here we had uh, the music for the school, the photos and screens trailer, as you can see, all, all the different folders that we needed and the film festivals, et cetera, that we went to. And then, uh, but for the team, so when we're sharing with broadcasters and distributors, we only wanted to share the final film. So we had the the music video master. We have a 60 minute screener for broadcast uh, and a DCP for cinemas, um, which they can download. So rather than us having to ship drives to cinemas that are playing the, the feature length documentary as a DCP file, um, they can download it from here. You can see it's quite a large file. It's 110 gig. Um, they can or uh, they can just download the whole folder and, and, and play that there. Um, and yeah, so, and then we've been, as you can see, lots of projects that we work on. Uh, but yeah, so only the the right people that we want to see it, which is the distributors. And then again, so making sure that we don't fall um, foul of... Uh, you know, our contracts and obligations to, you know, people that are, you know, paying money to, to release it. So, and it's got time code for them to sort of see and see if they want to make uh, notes and things. So these are just some clips, but you can just, it's amazing. You can just sort of push it on the timeline and just uh, pick up any, any part of the film that you want to. Um, and it just goes straight there. So super fast, super intuitive, and and just really really easy and, and so yeah but that's the team's part which we have in the enterprise thing and again it was just a really valuable part of getting that film distribution and and, and tv broadcast around the world excellent and you folks are also a big user of, of watermark id right yeah so watermark id 
again was useful for that and any, anyone you know we've got aspirations to be doing feature dramas in the near future in the next two you know one or two years and again uh even with our documentaries being able to share that uh and make sure that we've got got watermarking is really important and then on top of that again when we're sharing the financial results for the fintech company we can watermark it and we've got 100 percent security and it's a deterrent right so if anyone sees these results they're not gonna film it on their phone because their id's all over it um which is really good and it's again it's just that confidence and trust that we talked about at the beginning that's wonderful yeah when a when a client hires you to do something that specific and that that delicate you know absolutely no one can see this under any circumstances with legal ramifications if folks do see it that aren't supposed to um i'm very happy that you uh, that you know the frame io is that platform that can just make it happen no matter what that you can that you can just yeah, trust I, that your clients trust and you can move on to the next thing yeah and, it, and it's also just a, a confidence thing so they see that they know that we've got it handled if you don't have something there it's it's the kind of thing where you know that that can be just helpful to that they know and they can see it and they know that you're taking care of them and it's just again part of that trust and you know it's um it's just just a fantastic feature and again it's one of the reasons why we've been able to grow and and again get these clients that were probably out of reach for us before due to the you know we're not a not a massive company we've got uh you know eight full-time staff and we hire lots of freelancers we we sort of expand for the bigger projects and contract like most companies but you know we're sort of we we sometimes beat really really big production teams and you know for quite big jobs and you know, that was a cool one uh, on jersey beach with the england rugby team uh sort of having tug of war with a big racing truck red bull racing truck so yeah it's quite cool um yeah we that's get so cool fun stuff don't we i'm I'm interested to hear what some of the uh, the people online have been doing with their filming careers and who they get to work with. But that's one of the best things of what we do, right? You get to collaborate with other people, and and uh, yeah, it's fantastic to go go to all these places and and experience new things with different people. So you know, again, flying around that's in Nice in France, flying drones, filming with Olympians uh, for commercials for Bridgestone and. You know, that's just a morning recce where we're getting the drone shots and nice. We're always trying to shoot something. And then, uh, and again, sending that back with Camera to Cloud uh, of our Teradex serve. That's a really great system. I don't know if, if people haven't used Camera to Cloud yet. That is fantastic. We love it and still blows my mind. It's like seeing magic. You sort of, you know, we, we shot a commercial in France last week. And I think you know, with an hour of the editor getting the footage, we'd, we'd had a, you know, I, th I think I'd even got gotten home by the time we'd, we had a rough cut. So again, five years ago, that never would have happened. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I love talking about Frame.io and telling, telling colleagues and telling friends about camera to cloud. And a, a lot of the times people will, will think it's a very neat concept. Well, when you see it for the first time and when you use it for the first time, the concept of, of shooting video or photos, um, you know, and then just seeing it pop up around the world on any iPhone or iPad or, or, or laptop with the right access, and then having your editor start post-production while you're still shooting, um, people have this aha or this wow moment. And I know that you, you folks kind of caught that early on. Um, I'd, I'd love to talk more about your, your camera to cloud usage, how you started experimenting with it and how uh, now, you know, a couple of years down the road, how much do you, do you use camera to cloud and how important and essential is it to your workflow? Uh, I'd say it's really important. And actually it's saved us a couple of times where, you know, my editor has called out issues because uh, he can, he's basically in London, we're saving our carbon footprint as we travel and, um, you know, we, he's got the, the proxies, he's dropping them in the edit and then he's going, Oh, you, you're missing this shot. Or I think there was, there was one sort of commercial one, which before camera to cloud, if we'd done the usual way, done the shoot, packed our bags, gone back to the hotel, ingested, backed up, gone to the edit the following day, if we were lucky, we would have had to do a reshoot, right? It's really expensive, 5,000, 10,000 pounds. It would have cost us, um, and to then have my editor whilst I'm on set going, oh, 
you idiot, you have missed a shot or you've shot the guy the wrong way that, you know, I can't remember. Yeah. I basically had, had made a, made a, a mess up and it was like a get out of jail and, you know, the client never knew there was, there had been a problem because we avoided it. You know, I just got a WhatsApp saying, um, uh, check your, check your messages in frame. And, and then I went into frame, saw the comment and yeah, I could see the shot. I'd, I'd made a mess up. So, and you know, we all make mistakes. Um, and I'm not afraid to admit that you just make them, but I, I think I can safely say, you know, Fremo saved the day and I, I was blown away and I'm still blown away. I can't believe that we shoot, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes it's interviews and then we can get a transcript done and all of that, you know, before we go anywhere. And it's just, it's just, a, again, that trust where you go, well, I've got someone checking my back. You know, you've got a lot on your mind when you're on, on set. There's, you know, people asking questions left right and center have you lit it right have you asked the right questions did you you know and some of these projects you know spanning several months so to have have someone who's calm in the office without all that pressure uh it's just fantastic and it's um it's very cool yeah that 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 picture there is we we used in frame we had 10 animators in six countries during lockdown doing this animation for red bull and we were having animators put up their work up into frame. We could use it as a sort of file sharing system, which is cool and much more sophisticated and, and more suitable for us as a, as a video production com company than sort of like a WeTransfer, which is, you know, good and has its uses. But this is just like, a, it feels just bespoke for us, right? And so to be able to collaborate with those sorts of people in lockdown was amazing. And then we got this kind of really cool looking, uh, the thing here um you know animation with getting again to work with people from all over the world so every frame hand drawn it was like a three minute animation everyone sort of hand drawn drawn but again it was just sort of you know that um that frame -O capability and and the, the camera the cloud we were in france last week shooting a commercial with a paralympian and you know camera the cloud we use the teradex serve it goes up and again you know, it means that we can deliver a, a first cut to the, the agency in this case. And they couldn't believe how fast we've done it because they're, they're used to working with people who aren't using Camera to Cloud and they're used to waiting a week. You know, by the time we've traveled back to the UK, you've lost some days. So we're just getting an edge left, right and center. And, I, I, you know, it's, it's Frame IO is our little secret weapon on that, you know, just gives us that edge. And, you know, lots of product, lots of production companies are using Frame now, but you know, it's the ones, you know, it's the Frame.io uh, workflows that are sort of really giving us that, that golden edge. And that it's, you know, we, we're winning some big jobs and retaining some really big clients. You know, that's Rolls Royce uh, going for the electric flight air record uh, there in that shot. You know, these are big companies, you know, global companies, and, and we're trusted by them, you know, and we're operating, we're filming in America, Europe, you know, Germany, uh, we shot in the last year Spain, France, Germany, Italy, We're shooting in, in Rome for a week next week. And again, you know, Frame is like this, uh, I think I heard someone say, I can't remember who it was, you know, Frame is like this sort of airport and it's connecting everyone in filmmaking and it's connected me with my editors, connected me with my my clients and producers. Um, and it's, yeah, it's it's fantastic. Well, I'm not surprised to hear you say that. You You folks are... You folks are power users. You're squeezing every single drop of juice out of the orange to get the absolute most out of the out of the app. Um, and I, I see that even more after you folks switch to um, to enterprise. But one aspect that you're using Frame.io for really blew me away when I heard about it for the first time. We you've said a few statements about your carbon footprint, reducing your carbon footprint, um, and uh, you know using your business as a force for good. Could you tell me more about, uh, tell us more about how you applied to become a certified B Corp, what B Corp is and how you were able to use Frame.io and Camera to Cloud to, to reduce your, your carbon footprint? Uh, yeah, so in increasingly, you know, when we flew around the world, it was pretty clear to me that, you know, the environment is changing pretty fast. And wherever you your philosophies and uh, beliefs lie in that it was you know we went over melting ice caps fog in india 
floods in Venice. And you kind of go, this is all happening a bit faster than perhaps we're ready for. And I was going, you know, and I've got a young family. And so we want to make a company. We want STAM to be a company that uh, is socially responsible and environmentally responsible. So, and as such, the the highest sort of level that we could find on the on the planet for for that sort of standard is the B Corp or the the B certification. So companies like Patagonia, Ben and Jerry's uh, in the UK, Octopus, some really big, great companies that I find quite inspirational. We kind of go, well, we want to be a bit like them. So we looked into it. It took us about three years. And we we work really hard to reduce our carbon footprint, but also how we look after our staff and our freelancers. So trying to make sure, sorry, excuse me, we, so that we reduce our, our 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 impact. So, you know, so people have a family life. You know, I think in the Oscars, one of the the editors who, who won for Everything Everywhere All at Once was sort of saying, you know, we don't need to work ridiculous hours. We can look after each other. And traditionally, this industry has not been brilliant at that. And I think. You know, Framo has really helped us with that, and we actually put it as part of our evidence-based, legally binding sort of certification process to become a B Corp, and we reached that high, that standard with one of the highest scores in the world of any production company. And we, you know, obviously we measure our carbon footprint, and and using Frame and Camera to Cloud, we were able to reduce our our footprint compared to what we would have without it. We measured that and being forty nine forty nine percent less. Um, and we shot, you know, for that particular series, 14 commercials, uh, you know, across Europe over a year. So that's a massive saving you know, on that one shoot. That was one and a half tons, I think, of of uh, carbon dioxide saved by using frame because we didn't have to travel as many people uh, and it reduced our cost. It lowered the client's budget, but increased our profit, you know, so it's is is quite exciting so and the, you know the b corp thing is something we're very proud of and actually is increasingly becoming you know looked into by our clients some of our clients are b corps they love it that we are and it, the team all here you know if you've got families you want to make sure we're doing the right thing for the next generation and that's that's important i'm sure there's lots of people on online who also have the same sort of feeling and i think uh yeah, it feels good to be be a part of that and to be able to use like tools and ever use them as evidence in our application to become a B Corp. So, um, as, as stating as to how and why we 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 manage to score so highly because you get scores for everything you do. So if you give people, um, uh, you know, private healthcare as part of their salary uh, package, you get some points if you if you can reduce your or you can prove that you're recycling and if you can pr prove that you're doing certain systems and and Framo is a big part of our application we put it in several places for as evidence for how we're reducing our our carbon footprint so we, sh we ship less drives um with the 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 access that we can take things offline and after a period of time and not just leaving things online for forever they're sort of there for the their shelf life and we take them off it's wicked excellent well i gotta tell you we're we're so proud that you used Frame.io in this capacity, um, and we're honored that you are able to use us in your application to become a certified B Corp. Um, it's an incredible story, um, not just for the planet and the environment, but also in the um, following what you said about, you know, um, sometimes reducing the amount of hours that it takes to get a shoot done at the end of the day, because you're using camera to cloud, you're using Frame, and you have that global connective tissue through remote collaboration, you're able to do more with less faster. Um, but moving moving on, um, we want to know if anyone in the audience has any questions they would love to ask Ben about their workflow, about Frame.io. Um, we're both open books over here. So feel free to pop some questions um, in the chat. And while we wait for some questions to come in, I'd actually love to follow up on that topic and, and, and ask you, Ben, when it comes to you know, what you said about not having to work crazy hours, not having to fly on every single trip um, and turning a 12 hour day into a, 20, a 10 hour day when, when possible. Um, how do you, how do you, um, how do you go about doing that with, with Frame.io? Uh, well, with Camera to Cloud, we don't have to, 
we don't have to do the dit on set so we can clear up quicker the the um the collaboration is easier i don't need to sort of wait for clients to, to sort of get in touch with me on set and we can just go back to the hotel you know and then look at it in the evening together if we've got a, a second shoot day so it's just um you know making sure that we i hate it if we shoot a minute over um it's not to it's not because of overtime it's because i want people to get home to their families um but yeah so i think you know it's 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 really important to me that people have a life and that we try and do what we can as production people and we can do that you know it's totally in our control that's incredible lillian has a question um what do you attribute your steady growth to um yeah so uh thank you lillian um the steady growth i think comes down to a few things one is we are relentlessly trying to evolve um, as a business and we're constantly trying to combine technology with storytelling. So we're always trying to learn how to be better storytellers and we're always trying to learn uh, what the best technologies are and we combine those two together. And without doubt, Frame.io is one of those technologies that's helped us, you know, like I said before, sort of reach these clients I don't think we'd have the fintech business, which is a massive sort of stabilizing client of ours without it. And it helps us deliver to a high level. So that's that's part of it. It's, I think it's just that. It's just constantly learning and trying to improve. And I think that's allowed us, you know, some, we don't get everything right. Sometimes we we um, we fall short, but we never fall short in terms of our effort and 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 that desire to improve. And I think... You know, we've been using Frame for several years and we're constantly testing and we are never let down and they're sort of helping give us that edge. And, you know, the camera technology is improving all the time, uh, but at the end of the day, it's the people and those sorts of, it's the storytelling and that, that combination of technology of which, you know, the uh, Frame.io enterprise has sort of helped us level up there. But yeah, I think it's just, you know, just work hard work over time and doing that, I don't know about you guys uh, out there and how you find your you find that sort of mesh of human storytelling versus the technical stuff that really helps you deliver that. That's wonderful. Oh, great! We have another question coming in from David. When it comes to scaling, how have you found success growing your post production capacity? That's an important topic. It is an important topic. Um, uh, so scaling, uh, our post-production capacity, I think, has improved, right? So before um, before we were using Frame.io, I think we had low confidence in what we could deliver for our clients. And we would probably have gone to a post-house sooner um, to help us with some of those elements and getting, you know, if we want to send files uh, to clients, we'd probably be in more expensive West End, London West End sort of post houses that could help us deliver that tech. Now it's just made it much more democratized. And it's just, you know, we still work with the post houses just in a more efficient way. And, and they come in with more, the same money that we spend with them, but they're just doing the nicer, polished, uh, finished results. And, you know, they're using Frame.io too. So, uh, the post house we work with, you know, we, we, we tend to be quite loyal with the people that we work with. We work with them for, for years. They use Frame.io. We're all talking in the same system. And then, uh, yeah, so that scaling of the, the post production has, has been massively helped, uh, I think, by our, our capacity to stay in control of it for as long as possible and, uh, and, and just share things. So if we, if we want to share it with time code, we can do that. If we want to update the version, that's super easy stacking on top of each other. We do that all the time. Uh, you know, people are always, you know, clients and, you know, our agencies and clients are really happy to be able to sort of, you know, if it's a brand in particular that's going on TV and there's a logo, they can just sort of circle it. And it's just super clear and it just speeds everything up. So I think it's just, that's how it's helped. It's just, it's it, with anything you're doing, you're trying to take away friction. And that's what Frame.io does. It just takes away friction at all levels and of the post-production and increasingly now with Camera to Cloud with the production process when you're, when, excuse me, excuse me, when you're actually um, 
actually filming. So it's good. It's, it's uh, and it makes it just more fun and relaxing when you're on set. So I think I don't know if that's answered your question about scaling, um, but I think that's that's how we would see it. Yeah. All right. So I think we have another one coming in from Ashley. What platforms do you use to connect with and grow your remote freelance crews? What platforms do you connect? I'm not sure I understand the question. So, what am what I grow your freelance crews? So, in terms of growing my freelance crews, um, really, that's a sort of network, and we've been around a while. So, we've worked in most countries. I think I've worked in 30 countries around the world. Um, and in terms of platforms, uh, we're not really using Frame to grow our freelance crews, but we do use it to interact with our, our crews once they're on board. So, you know, we might need assets in from around the world and they can get shared. So I guess we use it for sort of file sharing on that basis. We have all of our policy documents. So on our website in the UK, there's a legal GDPR notice, which is very boring, but very necessary. Uh, so we have that. Uh, and so it's, it's file sharing, uh, stills sharing and all of that. But I, I, I'm not sure I've answered your question very well, Ashley, but I'm sorry, I don't really understand. Uh, sorry. Yeah, maybe um, Ashley might be referring to, um, you know, just growing those relationships with those freelancers, finding more folks. And I think to, to what you said before, just good old fashioned networking and knowing who the best people are in, All right, yeah. in your, in your yeah. area and, and the, the, the friends of friends and recommendations that your trusted folks will give you when they end up sick or have the flu and, you know, the person you go to every time they're going to get sick eventually. How do you know who to hire in their place? Yeah. Well, I think I heard a thing the other day that you should, you know, as a company that, you know, I should always be recruiting ABR, always be recruiting. And so I'm always meeting people uh, whenever I go around the world. I'm constantly looking at people and how they do their work on, you know, LinkedIn, um, social media channels, and you're seeing the work that they've done. And, you know, we're all, the, the industry is big enough. And I think we've all got to help look after each other. And I think, you know, when you're at the conventions like BSC in the UK or, you know, any, any of those sorts of things in your networking, um it's just yeah just i guess i just sort of there's no there's no um substitute for sort of meeting people in person but you then can follow that up online and you know it's uh for any i'm quite geeky i suppose because I, I do a lot of the tech side and you know when you find other people that also like the systems that you're using and 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 the way that you operate i, I could talk for hours on on cameras lights tech systems post-production systems and it's yeah it's quite cool isn't it you just find like-minded people around the world it's cool well, that's a great great answer and thank you ashley for for asking uh that question uh we may have we may have one more coming in there is uh we've got a few there regarding time code and multicam hello everyone um so I don't know if you might be able to answer that at all. We've got, we've got some support staff uh, coming in, but I don't know. It might be something kind of fun to uh, close out with. Uh, if it, it, Can you see it in there, Jason? Yeah, I, I can, I can see that. You can't, so let's see if we pop it up here. So the original question was this here. All right, cool. Maybe a question regarding time codes of doing multicam productions. And was there a second part to that question, Sean? Are all video sources synced? Is that question in relation to camera to cloud? Yeah, I think I think it might be. So we when we shoot um, uh, multicam and we're using camera to cloud, all the proxies go up with the the relevant you know, information. So it's super easy to, to link the, the multicams together. Uh, I think if that's, if, if that's this what... might elaborate a little more on that. Yeah. So, well, I mean, I, I, we use, uh, if we haven't depends on the production, I think everyone is slightly different. So the one I've got coming up, I'm filming next week in Rome. I have to self shoot a lot. So I'll be using the tentacle sync 
to jam my time codes, uh, as you mentioned there. Um, I will also quite often use a clap. If we've got a uh, professional um, sound engineer with us, they will quite often use their equipment uh, to jam the time code with their whizzy comms and all sorts of stuff that is, is not the kind of technical stuff. I mean, the sound tech, I love great sound. I just... I'm not brilliant at achieving it. I think we need the sound people, sound people to achieve that. So, uh, but yeah, it's, but whenever we, we've never had a problem using multicams and, and camera to clouds. So and when they all go up, it's just super easy to bring them. We've got the proxies in there and all the time code information there. And that's, yeah, so that's it. It's super easy. Get stuck in. That's all I can say. <laughs> There's always more than one way to do it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we have this QR code up right now. Um, if you're if you're watching right now, um, you know, go ahead and and scan this. We're gonna be able to connect you with folks that can tell you more about about Frame IO. If you're curious about any of the features that you've heard today, um, simple little QR code to scan. And while folks are scanning that that code, I'm gonna ask Ben one more question. And that's for, for all of the companies that are watching right now and the freelancers, the folks that are thinking about starting their own company or might be in the middle of scaling themselves right now, maybe they're starting out. What advice do you have to business owners and freelancers that wanna take the next step and create a, a production company out of their, out of their workflow? Um, what advice do you have to them, for them to, um, to scale um, the way that Stamp Productions has? I think, um... You've got to have a real passion, right? And you've got to stand for something. So whatever that is, you know, you be passionate about it and go for it and just deliver uh, to the best of your ability at the, you know, look after the clients you've got, but make sure you're working for people that, you know, uh, value what you're doing and how you deliver it. And I think, you know, if you can, just get the best sort of systems in place that help you deliver that without and take away all that hassle. So a hundred percent, you know, uh, from our enterprise has been a, a massive game changer for us and has, you know, unlocked another level for us. Um, uh, but in terms of it, it's, it's attitude, just, you know, back yourselves and just make sure if you say you're going to do something, deliver and have, have systems you can trust. And for us, that's Frame.io. We trust Frame.io implicitly. Um, and, you know, we've had, we've been on shoots where cameras have failed and, you know, tech sometimes fails, but Frame.io has never failed. And that's just so important. And like I said, during the, during the talk, you know, those times where getting that call from the editor saying, look, you've missed a shot because he knew because he could see the footage from London when we were in Spain it's just if you lose that trust you never get those clients back and it's hard you, you go two steps back so just build one step at a time consistency over time that's what i'd say i don't know but i'm, I'm happy to hear other people's thoughts <laughs> <laughs> well on that note unfortunately we do have to cut it off we are at time we're actually a little bit over time so thank you for everyone that's stuck around and uh listen to this wonderful discussion i always like to end with a big Thank you uh, to everyone that's joined along. Uh, Jason and Ben, thank you so much for uh, your insight and how you were able to grow your company uh, using Frame.io. We are so uh, fortunate to have a user like you. And uh, we, we hope that folks on this call were inspired by this conversation. Um, and this recording will be available on YouTube um, uh, later this afternoon. And uh, look out for more webinars that come along. Uh, once again, thank you so much, Jason and Ben, uh, for joining along. And uh, yeah, everyone, have a great rest of your day. And we'll see you on the next stream. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Much appreciated. Thanks for having me. Um, bye. Thanks, Sean.